Hello, and welcome to the Electra training video series. This video will cover an overview of how to execute a test in Electra. If you're following along from the Creating a Test Template video, I'm continuing from where we left off. At this point, we set up our entire test for multiple azimuths, heights, and polarizations. For the sake of training purposes, we've gone in and limited a few of these parameters so that we don't have to go wait very long to get to a final measurement. We'll click through each screen real quick so you can see what is defined for this video. For overview and maximization, we change azimuth to go from 0 to 90 instead of 0 to 360. We change height to just measure 1 meter instead of 1 to 4 meters. For data reduction, we added the limit line under acceptance analysis and then set the maxima limitation to 5 instead of 20. For zoom, we left it with 10 measurement bandwidth range. Under adjustment, we change height to 50 centimeters instead of 4 meters. Lastly, we didn't change anything in final measurement. If you find the play button grayed out, you must save your test template in order to be able to create a test. One other thing to be aware of, after clicking the play button, if an EUT has not been defined yet, you cannot start a test until you have defined one as you can see in the video here. More information can be found on this in the EUT video. For the sake of this video, we'll create a new EUT now. To do this, click the three dot button and select create new. For this video, we'll just use the new EUT that the software has created for us. Click Select to use this EUT for this test. Now, click New Test at the bottom of the screen. This creates and opens the test windows, and Electra is now in Measurement Mode. Electra defaults into Automated Mode as you can see here, with the toggle icon highlighted to the left where you can see the Robot icon. This is actually a toggle which, when clicked on, Electra goes between Automated and Interactive Mode but you can also put Electra in manual mode by clicking the hand icon. For more information, please check out the dedicated video on automated versus interactive mode. For now, we'll use automated mode, and to actually execute the test, you would click this play button in the top right-hand corner of the screen, which is the start button. Once you've clicked this button, if the EUT associated with the current test is not active, Electra will ask you if you'd like to make it the active EUT. Since we just created our EUT and associated it to this test, we will select Yes to make it active. Once you've clicked that, Electra goes through a test validation process. If there's any issues or if there's any items not saved previously, Electra will prompt you in the right lower window for things that need to be fixed or addressed before the test can begin. In this case, we're going to simulate all items shown here. To do this, click Simulate. Now the test will begin. Now turn your attention to the left side of the screen. We can now see a measurement flow control window, which shows you the current status and the next steps the test will take. Also take note of the right hand side of the screen. This shows the current details of the test that we are performing, including the frequency that is being measured. As we continue through the test, you'll see that Electra is going to step through each azimuth, height, and polarity that we defined. As you can see, we've completed the horizontal data and now we're moving on to the vertical polarization. You will also see that some of the data is off screen right now. So if you want, you can right click on the Y axis itself and click Do Auto Scale. This will scale the Y axis according to the current measurement results and bring everything into view. When the overview measurement is finished, we're going to perform the data reduction as we can see in the measurement flow control window. It will walk through all these steps really quickly, peak search, maxima limitation, subrange maxima, and acceptance analysis. As you can see here, the pause pop-up has appeared, which is something we set up during the test template video. This allows the ability to add or remove points from the critical frequency table, which we can see has happened at the bottom of the window. To add another point, you can click and drag from the spectrum itself into the table. You can also select a point in the table and delete a row. Once you're satisfied with your critical points table, click the play button again to continue through the measurement flow. Now you can see in the measurement flow control window, we have moved on to the maximization measurement. It's going to walk through similar steps like it did during the overview measurement. 0 to 90 degrees in 30 degree steps, 1 meter height fixed position, and both horizontal and vertical polarities. This is only done for the frequencies that were defined in the critical points table.
Now we get one more pause before final measurement, which is something else we also defined in the test template. You get one last chance to add or remove points, which will be analyzed for zoom, adjustment, and final measurement. Click the play button one more time to perform the rest of the measurement. Three new windows open one at a time as the measurements are completed. The first being zoom, then adjustment, and then adjustment height. As you can see in the zoom window, you'll have the spacing of 10 resolution bandwidths that we selected around the current frequency being measured. The adjustment windows show the azimuth adjustment, which is 30 degrees as we defined. Lastly, the adjustment height shows 1 to 1.25 meters. This is because the software has range clipping enabled, which will never allow the turntable or mast to proceed beyond their set boundaries. Since our peak was found at 1 meter, and we had set a fixed height of 1 meter, the software will not measure any lower than 1 meter. You will note that the zoom and adjustments are performed with the same detectors that were set during the overview measurement. Once that is completed, Electra will enable the final detector and take the final result measurement. It will then move to the next frequency in the critical points table until it's finished all frequencies. Now that the final measurement has completed, you have your results in the final results table as shown here. This completes the measurement and based on the data taken, Electra sets the test indicator at the top accordingly to test failed. This verdict can be user changed if need be. This concludes the training video on executing a test in Electra. If you're following along, the next video will cover working in automated versus interactive mode.